All right, so today we got ourselves a little bit of a scandal which has just hit the sneaker community. Now this story actually happens to involve customers' personal information and if you've ever happened to enter an EQL raffle, you may not want to miss this one. Plus Jordan brand, I don't know what it is, but they are definitely up to something. We're going to be discussing the latest 2025 leaks. But to kick things off, we got a couple of quick updates. First from New Balance, it looks like they've actually announced their latest signee in Cooper Flagg, who is a huge name in the world of high school basketball. He's getting ready to start his college career over at Duke. Now, what makes this signing very special, of course, Cooper, he did grow up in Maine, which is very close to New Balance's main head headquarters and he said quote I grew up wearing New Balance and I appreciate their authentic connection to my community so as far as what critics are saying this is a major move and it looks like New Balance is looking to you know better establish themselves in the world of basketball sneakers so it looks like as far as this move it looks like they're just planting a seed which they hope later down the line will blossom into a flower and then we got Reebok which is a brand we rarely talk about here on the channel but I did want to mention this upcoming Packer collaboration which as far as Packer last year they teamed up with Adidas on a couple of really cool models I forgot exactly what the model was I want to say it was like the BYW or something but basically what I'm getting at is that Packer has some really great tastemakers they do a great job of not only choosing a great retro model out of any brand's vast catalog but they do a great job of colorways which as you guys see the color tones here really complement a far release right here so as far as this silhouette the premier road modern this one right here is a retro reebok model but i think a more modern take so i think this is a model which they actually brought back into circulation as of recently and this just proves right now that pretty much the y2k runner you can't go wrong pretty much every brand has some type of addition in their catalog so be on the lookout for these as they are set to drop coming up this fall now with those quick updates out of the way let's go ahead and get into today's releases which from nike we saw them drop the u.s open women's dunk low so we saw these joints drop via nike as well as select retailers for 120 bucks from reebok once again that's two reebok mentions in one video they actually teamed up with the new film alien romulus to drop a collaboration on their bb 4002 mid which as far as this pair right here this actually happens to be the specific pair that ridley scott actually wore in the original aliens film so I feel like that's a really cool thing to like bring back a sneaker which uh, actually happens to correlate with a film so really cool way to commemorate that release so these joints actually did happen to sell out so uh, it seems like those were a big hit those did drop for 170 bucks and then as far as the big drop of the day once again we got those I'm a money yeah, threes which we saw hit the sneakers app now as far as this release right here, I think this is a pair which I think we did have a big group of people that did enjoy these when we first saw them hit. But then you had that small sector of Jordan brand, you know, fans that were saying like they were holding out for the black cement threes to drop. But now that we had the raffle, we had the exclusive access and now this official sneakers app drop. I would say that this pair has kind of grown on people. I think it's a great addition to the Jordan three lineup, you know, nice solid color blocking. Apparently the reviews are saying materials are good on these. And I just really appreciate the complimentary sale laces. I think that's like chef's kiss on a really nice pair of Jordans. So with that being said, now that this pair has came and gone, I guess we could look forward to a couple of maybe little random restocks, but these joints are pretty much done for. So when it comes to high profile Jordan collabs that we saw drop here in 2024, you could add this to the list on top of those Nina Chanel Abney Jordan 3s. We also had the J Balvin Rio pair. So what do you guys feel like was the best high profile Jordan 3 collaboration that we saw drop this year for me you know I don't want to really say right now but I feel like as far as the best one I may have to give the edge to J Balvin but I feel like these Amon Manier joints are really nice and really close up there but again salute to Nina Chanel on another cool pair as well and then speaking of Amon Manier they actually just unveiled the Jordan 39 collaboration which continues the while you were sleeping collection so I guess currently the raffles open right now via I'm a man, yeah, probably social status as well so I'm assuming that based off this pair which is probably going to be lesser of a demand for this release uh, this one should be a lot more limited and a lot less availability versus these Jordan 3's that we saw drop today which according to Eldon Monitors by the way apparently we had 10,000 pairs which did load up for these sneakers that have dropped so let me know what you guys think about these joints now as far as this whole EQL scandal this whole thing exploded yesterday online and if you're actually unfamiliar with EQL they're essentially a 
web-based raffle system which has been put into place for like high in demand high volume releases they're also said to actually help eliminate bots and pretty much as far as like in the sneaker community i would say as a whole it's pretty much the preferred uh release method when it comes to like high profile in demand releases as this twitter user put i really don't know how anyone could hate on eql totally change the game in raffles for hype product simple to use easy to enter in pretty seamless no matter the product so i think that's what most people would say but this person actually chimed in saying no disrespect to anyone but i might be one of the few that still does he was referring to actually hating on eql as he then went on to list all of his raffle l's all of the l's that he's taking it on partaking in eql raffles over the last year or so so bro right here he wasn't really feeling eql too much until eql actually happened to chime into the conversation where they said bruh you won SB Udo's last August. You're entering stuff that is mostly super hot in size 11 and a half. You have four different EQL accounts with your name on them and you've got a streak of 15 entries where you've entered twice. Just play fair and you'll win fair. So this is one of those like drop the mic moments. Everybody was like, oh, EQL just flame bro right here. So we saw a lot of jokes on the Twitter timeline. This person put, you had to physically create four accounts using different emails and you conveniently forgot that. Sure, somebody else chimed in saying, bro, you really gonna pretend like you don't know you have four accounts? Yeah, so it seems like it was all fun and games and this EQL post started to go viral but then we also had some people chime in with a little bit of criticism where this user wrote this is honest feedback this post is why I didn't join the discord I didn't want any of my private entry info potentially posted online like this so this is where the criticism starts to come in because remember as a major company such as EQL which has a lot of you know customer sensitive data information at their fingertips they can't be just like giving out people's personal information like this which is almost like a breach of their data policy potentially and with all of this information that just one person's fingertips is just easy for anybody to just instantly like kind of uh expose anybody's information such as so it seemed like at this point eql kind of realized that they may have messed up and seemed like they were kind of backtracking as they said we made a one-time exception to let the guy know why he isn't winning and i feel like this is my favorite comment right here where this dude said well he was shit talking us so we had to put him on the summer jam screen eql legal obviously referring to the iconic jay-z summer jam moment i thought that tweet right there was golden right there so at this point eql definitely knows that uh this is a bad look for the company i think they were trying to go like viral you know in like some type of marketing attempt but it seems like that whole thing kind of backfired they said we didn't mean for it to be a joke that wasn't our intention it was a reply to let the guy know why he isn't winning he contacted us in the past about losing will remove it so eql backtracking but it seems like people weren't really feeling that response as this guy said you did it out him but as a company you could have sent him a dm or even given him a public hypothetical example of why someone wouldn't win this was in poor taste and it's hard for me to believe that this was a one-time mishap might not be illegal but definitely unethical somebody else said eql doing some breach of customer privacy whether they like to hear it or not hat club did the same thing to me and back in the day with the jtips release where ben from hat club couldn't take a effing joke and went into the orders database and deleted my order so it looks like as eql issued an official statement after deleting the official tweet they said it was a lapse of judgment and then it got picked up the gifts were funny but when we shouldn't have responded to that guy with his account history we've never done it before and we won't do it again we'll keep to the dms and customer support team so overall how do you guys feel especially if you're somebody that's actually entered or partaken in an eql raffle do you feel like they've kind of uh breached customer privacy by revealing like this guy's kind of history even though he is kind of cheating the system you know it's kind of unethical at the end of the day so i feel like you have some people that feel like this was great that eql outed this dude which obviously is trying to like cheat the system and everything like that but then you have people on the other side that argue that this is like totally unacceptable and from a major company such as eq well they shouldn't be playing with people's information like this so at the end of the day what do you guys think about it while i feel like it was kind of funny you know um nothing really was actually uh 
you know, provided as far as his personal information, except for his account has been outed now. But as far as like his personal information, that wasn't outed, but it is kind of crazy to think that, you know, just an employee who runs the EQL Twitter account has all of these people's personal information at their fingertips. And at any moment, you know, a data breach like this could happen. So let me know what you guys think about this whole EQL scandal. Seemed like it was making big noise, you know, in the Twitter world yesterday. And for Jordan Brand, we just got some huge major leaks for 2025, which according to Z Sneakerheads and Sneaker Files, some very respectable leakers here in the sneaker community. We got some great pairs to look forward to. So we got not only the Taxi 12s, we got these Bugs Bunny 8s, but we also have the Black Cat 4s to look forward to, which for 2025, that lineup is already stacked. I don't know what Jordan brand has planned, but they're definitely up to something. So I don't know what the rollout is gonna be as far as all of these pairs. I don't know if they're gonna be limited or what, but I feel like we have definitely some big surprises to look forward to because we got so many great pairs, so many classics coming out the vault. Um, re-releasing for 2025. So as far as these three pairs in particular, uh, this Bugs Bunny 8 pair, I remember I actually did grab mine back in 2013. So I remember when I grabbed these joints back then, this was like an easy pickup. You know, nothing crazy. The demand wasn't too hype for these. So we'll see how it goes as far as this release. Uh, I would say it looks like they actually haven't released them since then. So people have definitely uh, been waiting, I guess you could say. So as far as this pair, we'll see how it does when these joints do drop. But a great OG colorway. And you got to love the eights, one of the more underappreciated Jordan Retro models. Now, as far as these Taxi 12s, these ones are even more special because I actually remember this was my very first pair of Jordans, the OG Jordans joints which I remember getting back in the day as a little kid in elementary that's what kind of started this whole thing and I do also remember picking up the joints back in 2013 now at that time I remember waiting in line actually happened to take an L uh, so did actually pick those up for resale so the demand was definitely high back in 2013 and with this re-release for 2025 I definitely expect it to be uh, nothing less than uh, a little bit crazy so uh, some great pairs to look forward to Jordan brand they put out some close renditions to the taxi 12s but nothing uh, like the original og joints and then for these black cat fours i feel like this is probably the biggest of the three uh, i remember my boy had these joints like back in high school always admired this sneaker always a great looking joint i think the last time they dropped them 2020 so not too long ago but hey with the demand is crazy for this pair you already know this is going to be a solid hit so jordan brand 2025 i don't know what they got going on but they're definitely up to something now of course in typical corporate fashion we know they do have to continue to push the margins as Jordan Brand has continued to increase their annual revenue each year. So I don't know if they're bringing back all of these classics just in order to push up, boost that revenue, or if they're going to actually make these joints um, a little more limited, try to preserve the legacy and all that good stuff. Because you know how the narrative has been going as far as Jordan Brand releases. So stay tuned for more information on those, but three more great additions to the already stacked 2025 Jordan brand lineup. So I appreciate everybody that made it all the way to the end here before we bounce. We are gonna get into today's poll of the day, which is one that I found extremely interesting. So if you guys are ever interested in checking out the poll of the day, make sure you guys check out the community tab here on this YouTube channel. So I simply asked you guys for 2024, if you had to give New Balance a letter grade, what would it be? So we had roughly almost 2000 votes and it looks like the majority of you guys actually gave New Balance a B with 49% of the vote. In second place, we had A at 28%, followed up by C 15% and uh, just 8% of you guys gave New Balance a D, which I found very surprising surprising because whenever I mention New Balance, you know, I hear nothing but hate, like talking about these are dad grandpa shoes. You guys already know, I don't know why people are jumping on the hype wagon. You guys know the typical story. So it seems like with New Balance, although the majority of sneakerheads are gonna tell you right here that they're doing a great job. You're always gonna have those people that, you know, love to hate on New Balance, but it is what it is now. As far as what would have probably pushed them into the A category, I did see a lot of people mention that as far as their collaborations, they're just too obtainable, or I'm sorry, unobtainable, difficult to cop. So as far as their collabs, very difficult, um, high profile collaborations, but I think New Balance has been killing it as far as their GR releases, which is why um, they got a steady B as the majority of you guys 
uh, gave them that solid rating. So again, appreciate everybody for participating in that poll. Of course, we are gonna wrap things up right here. So salute to everybody that tuned in here on this wonderful Tuesday. Of course, I'll be back with you guys tomorrow for the latest and greatest here in the world of sneakers. And in the meantime, of course, stay safe, stay blessed. I'm JA and I will catch you guys next time. I'm out y'all, love.